Norwegian. I can be Norwegian. Yes. Oh. Hi, there we go. Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek TV, Essen 2013. I'm sitting with Ari Tenwold. Hi. And John Lopez at the end there. And you guys are both from Quantum Magic. Correct. And you brought us a two-player game here called Two Crowns. Yes, two-player game. In a, in a nice two-player box. Two player box also, yeah. <laughs> two dice, two sets of cards. It, it must be a running thing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. All right, two crowns. Yeah, well, in two crowns, uh, each player takes on the role of a medieval lord. It's a game that uh, we picture could be played in the taverns when the uh, winter sets in and the nights, uh, it's too cold for the knights to go out. As and they're uh, carving their own dice. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the idea is uh, every player is a lord, and uh, the goal is to lay siege to the castle of your opponent. Well, we have little castles here in the form of a 20 sided die. Uh, both on 20, so you need to do 20 damage to destroy your uh, opponent. Uh, and you do that very easily. You get a hand of seven cards, and some of them cards are knight cards, which are these uh, green ones. You can see them in uh, different values. They have a value of one, two, or three, but I don't have it right here now. And uh, when it's your turn, you can either do uh, one of two things you can declare an attack on your opponent or you can draw new cards. If you declare an attack, you place down uh, one to four cards from your hand and uh, announce an attack like this. And you're placing them face down? Yeah. You place them the face down in front of you and your opponent gets a choice to either defend or just let them come at your castle. Well, let's say for instance, I attack with these three cards, my opponent chooses to defend with these two. Then we flip them over. You can see it's uh, three against uh, four means the attacker wins and deals one damage on the nice. castle dice of the opponent. That's the, the basic simple mechanic of two crowns. But it would be a bit boring if that was only there to it. So there are some extra cards you can send uh, from your hand to manipulate the game. For instance, if I would uh, send a, a faint maneuver with it, the strongest knight card of my opponent would be uh, disoriented, disorientated out of battle. <laughs> Difficult word for me. <laughs> <laughs> Typical word in, in their native English, too. <laughs> oh, luckily. Uh, there's another card you can send. It's a vessel, which actually uh, doubles the points of the knight cards on my side. So it's a big boost. Then there's uh, the bishop. He uh, converts the strongest uh, knight card of my opponent to my hand, so I can steal it. It's coming to my side. And the best card to send with your army is uh, the catapult, uh, which actually, before the battle begins, shoots 10 damage straight to the castle of my opponent. Very strong card, uh, but as you can see, here uh, it, it costs something to pay these cards. Also, the vessel and the uh, bishop, they all have a gold cost uh, that must be paid. And you pay these cards when you pay, play the card from your hand. You, you also have to have the gold in your hand and you play them uh, with it. So there are uh, two different kinds of gold cards. Uh, of value one and of value two. So you have to really collect them from your deck. And you're constantly working uh, between attacking your opponent, defending your own castle and saving up for the bigger cards. And is there any limit to the amount of cards you can have in your hand? Yeah, there's a limit of seven cards. If you have seven cards and you uh, want to draw new cards, you have to discard one, uh, draw two, and keep the best one. Or you can, if you uh, start your turn with less than seven cards, you may draw up to seven. Nice. And that's the best way to draw new cards. So you really have to make some tough decisions. You can't yeah, sit there and yeah. build up 20 cards. And well, <laughs> the, the fun thing is you uh, constantly have to make tough decisions, every round actually. But you also have to uh, pay attention to the long term of the game because uh, the, both decks are the same. So you really have to anticipate what's my opponent doing. Is he saving up for a catapult maybe? Is he constantly defending with low knight cards? And am I helping him by attacking him constantly? So there's a, a really a long term uh, strategy behind the game. How long would a game take? A uh, regular game, it's, it's, we call it the medieval snack game. So it's, uh, it's also a lunch break game. So probably 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, I, I, I love that you guys think in terms of uh, the meal that would associate yeah. with this game. <laughs> we're done, so we're very close to our meals and our drinks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and just to mention one other uh, thing, eh, we were talking about uh, having to think ahead. Uh, let's say your attack is successful. Uh, those night cards that are successful in the attack, they are moved into a rest state. Yeah. They're marching back home to the castle, so. which means 
you won't be able to use those cards in the defense during your next turn when the other player is. Makes sense. Yeah, so you can't constantly attack. You have to anticipate what's going on. Now, I've never seen it. It's pretty simple but very bold artwork. Who do, who do the art for these? Uh, Stefan. Stefan Hoek. Yeah. It's a Dutch it's, artist it's a also. Dutch artist. Yeah. He was also involved with the design of the game itself. I was just thinking, yeah. like, when you guys flipped over the catapult card here, that, that is very simple but very striking. Yeah. It really sort yeah. of gets the idea that it's going to go yeah. Yeah. right yeah. in your face. Well, it's, it's a bit, you know, it's abstract, uh, what we like. It's, it's a, a simple game in design, and uh, it seems to, uh, to catch the attention of I, I would say it's clean. Clean. Yes. In its design. Oh, yeah. Simple <laughs> is a negative word. Okay. Yeah, we wanted a, a stylistically medieval uh, card game. Yeah. How about that for description? And, oh, that's a good description. Well, Ari and John, thank you so much for uh, coming over to our booth and showing us two crowns. The uh, unofficial title would be the Medieval Snack Game. <laughs>